Welcome everyone to Oaklawn today. Nancy Holtis joined alongside track announcer Vic Stoffer. We come off a few well-deserved days off. Just a three-day race week because we will observe the Easter holiday on Sunday, but a lot to look forward to this upcoming weekend. You know, Nance, one of my jobs as the announcer is to announce when stakes nominations are closing. And today and tomorrow I am announcing that horsemen and jockey agents need to look out for the Arkansas Derby, the Apple Blossom, the Count Fleet, the Fantasy, the big ones, the Racing Festival of the South. That means it's getting close. That's right. We are in the final countdown for the 2018 race season. So with that being said, let's take a look at today's track and weather conditions. 63 degrees on the Thursday card. A muddy track condition and mostly cloudy skies and winds out of the south at 17 miles an hour. Race one, also the first leg of the early 50 cent pick four for Maiden. Three-year-olds and up, claiming price of $25,000. That will go six furlongs in the opener. Here's the field of eight. They're at the post. They're off. Slow start for Omega, good start for Stormy Forecast and Match Play. These two are quickest air power, Charlie's a Charmer and Take Charge Easy at the rail. Next, it's Paramount and Omega, and the early trailer is Oki Copper Bandit. Stormy Forecast and Match Play up the back stretch. Stormy Forecast, a neck in front. Match Play is second by a length and a half to a lineup of three. Air power between horses, Take Charge Easy at the rail, and Charlie's a Charmer three deep. Then it's two lengths further back to Omega. He's about to go up four wide. Here's Omega. Omega within three and a half of the front. Paramount has only one beat and he's six off the lead and the one he has beat is Oki Copper Bandit as they round the far turn and match play is going to forge to a short lead from Stormy Forecast. Omega continues to advance on the outside. He's outside of Charlie's a Charmer. Those two are only a length and a half from the front. Then air power and take charge easy. Top of the stretch match play forging now to a clear lead. Match play is a length in front of Stormy Forecast in second. Take charge easy's just taken third. Omega flattens out and match play comes to the final 16th and he's two lengths in front of Stormy Forecast. Then take charge easy and Charlie's a charmer. It's match play in front. Match play won by a length and a quarter. Stormy Forecast was second, take charge easy third and Charlie's a charmer finished fourth. A very formful start of the day and the week here at Oakland Park as number seven match play bet down to odds on favoritism does not disappoint and wins the opener in one eleven and three. Ridden to victory by leading jockey Ricardo Santana Jr. and trained by leading trainer Steve Aspas and the rich get richer. Stormy forecast was second, take charge easy third and Charlie's a charmer finished fourth. There were two claims from the opener. In a two-way shake, Rio Robertino Diodoro will be the new trainer of Stormy forecast and Paramount's new trainer will be Shay Stewart. They were both claimed for 25000 Race two is for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward for a claiming price of $10,000. They will go one mile in distance. Here's track announcer Vic Stoffer with the call. They're off. Indian Jim has asked for speed, so is First Bay, but Indian Jim is quickest. Her and Mass Talent will sprint along, and they go very fast into the clubhouse turn. Indian Jim and Mass Talent match race early. First Bay moves through at the rail inside of Banjo Cat and Ochi's Girl. Then comes Devilish Reason, Valentine Charm, and Abby and Pink, and the early trailer is Seeking Bull. Lots of pace on with Indian Jim and Mass Talent to the back stretch. Indian Jim's a neck in front. Mass Talent is second to a lineup of three. Three wide Archie's bull between horses Banjo Cat and First Babe at the rail. First Babe is fifth now and about two from the front. Then it's a gap of five or six lengths back to the next flight. Valentine Charm and Devilish Reason. Then Abby and Pink and Seeking Bull. They run towards the half mile pole. The 16th pole is the finish line and Indian Jim and Mass Talent continue to trade punches. Indian Jim at the rail. A neck in front of Mass Talent in second. Banjo Cat is three deep. Archie's girl is four wide in the black. First Babe is now is still fifth, but now she's four lengths behind. Got to go for Santana at the rail. Then comes Abby and Pink, who's moving up. Here comes Abby and Pink from the back of the pack. She could be heard from late. Abby and Pink with forward momentum. Fifth now and on the move. Abby and Pink's about to get into third. Meanwhile, Indian Gem is still the leader. She's put away mass talent, but here comes the danger. It is Abby in Pink in the center of the racetrack, and she's the danger to Indian Gem for the final furlong and between horses seeking bulls also 
still there. And here comes Seeking Bull to split horses. She's the one that takes over from Indian Gem. Abby and Pink flattens out, and Seeking Bull makes the last run to win. Seeking Bull one by two, Indian Gem second, Archie's Girl third, and Abby and Pink finish fourth. Number six, Seeking Bull makes the last run and wins race number two for Aaron Shorter and Luis Contreras. 140 and three, the final running time. Indian Jim ran a great race to be second. She ran her heart out, second best. Archie's girl was third, and Abby and Pink, who made that big move around the far turn, could not sustain it and finished fourth. There was a two-way shake for number two, the favorite first babe. She was claimed for $10,000. New trainer, Cipriano Contreras. Race three is for maiden fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, claiming price $12,500. Scratch number six, pistache. Here's the field of 11, set to go one mile. They're off. Brahmi is hard sent, run Juja run is quickest, and there's run Juja run for the front. Then comes to the outside and make daddy proud. Sophie's pocket is next and the outside further is Lady Margaret, but it's Run Juja Run and that's just what she's doing. Run Juja Run is opening up a big lead to the back stretch. It's four lengths from Lady Margaret and make daddy proud and Sophie's pocket at the rail. Then comes Chirac, backside Bell and the outside Featherstone followed by Niles Show and Satin Surprise. Brahmi was sent, but is second to last early and the early trailer is Sweet as Caroline. Solid pace on set by Run Juja Run. She leads Make Daddy Proud by a length and a half. Make Daddy Proud is traveling very nicely for Jareth Loveberry. He's got a long, beautiful hold on her, and she is traveling well. Then it's three and a half now back to Sophie's Pocket, followed by Chirac, who joins Satin Surprise and Backside Bell. Then comes Lady Margaret, still five back to Featherstone and Nile Show. Brahmi and Sweet as Caroline is still far back. The finish line is the 16th pole, and Make Daddy Proud is going to try to get there first. She's taken over the lead without being asked. Make Daddy proud to the quarter pole now in front of Run Juja Run. It is eight lengths back to Backside Bell who just emerged into third as she passed Sophie's pocket. Sweet as Caroline is mid-pack now but she's double digits behind. Make Daddy proud who is in charge at the top of the stretch. Make Daddy proud comes to the wire with a three length lead. Backside Bell has moved into second from Run Juja Run. Sweet as Caroline in the center for a minor award but it's Make Daddy proud clear from Backside Bell make daddy proud in front make daddy proud beat backside bell Swedish Caroline got third and run Juja run was fourth well here's a feel-good story we just lost trainer Tom Howard we know him so well for many years here at Oakland Park most recently as the trainer of Ivan fallen off a lot his wife Kathleen Howard is taking over the barn and this is her first ever training victory how about that make daddy proud wins it for Jareth Loveberry and superior racing stables in 143 flat backside bell was second sweet as Caroline was third and run Juja run fourth there was a claim in the third number one sweet as Caroline was claimed for twelve thousand five hundred dollars New trainer Tyrone Gleason. Want to know the most eye opening use of your iPhone or iPad? It's the new Oaklawn Anywhere app. Oaklawn Anywhere is now available in the App Store. Arkansas residents can download it for free, then watch and wager on your iPhone or iPad and enjoy cashback rewards. When you're here at the track, why stand in line to place your bet? when you can do it from your seat. Sign up today using promo code APP and earn a $150 bonus when you wager at least $500 within 30 days of creating your account. The Oaklawn Anywhere app opens up a world of top racing action right before your eyes. From Oaklawn, home of the Arkansas Derby and the Racing Festival of the South, to thoroughbred racing at tracks across the country, you can watch and wager right from your iPhone or iPad. Oaklawn Anywhere, the exclusive horse racing wagering app that's anywhere you want it to be. Let's go back to that little place where we used to go in the summer days. Do -do -do -do. Find this place at 
hotsprings.org. It pays to be an Arkansas bred at Oaklawn Park. Easter Indy trying to make it two in a row in the down the dusty road, and she's got it. It is Easter Indy. Yes! If the rainbow is going to go to 501, who levels out and runs away to win. Five $100,000 stakes for Arkansas bread. Let there be no doubt who's best in the rainbow miss. Take a look at ministry. That is. And Racer has won the no double breeders stakes. Racer reaches Mallard's Bro second. Racer. $7,000 in person incentives for Arkansas breads finishing first, second, or third in open company. West Rock Coffee is made from the highest quality beans available, grown by passionate farmers in East Africa. We continually educate our farmers to ensure that they have the latest tools and training, which result in the highest quality coffee. In doing so, we make sure that every worker is able to build a good life for themselves and their families. Each cup of West Rock Coffee enriches the lives of both those who drink it and, more importantly, those who grow it. West Rock works wonders. Race four on the Thursday afternoon is for maiden three-year-olds, claiming price $40,000. Scratch eight, Mo Gowan. Scratch 10, Bo Ready. They'll go a mile and a 16th today for race four. They're off. Handsome Harv broke well. All the wrong reasons and Maka's reward. Inside post star sharp. Cause to action is close up. Yellow Wolf's going to be wide outside of Uncle Ike. Then Awesome Times 2. All the wrong reasons now drops back. Ripe is midfield. Hard to park is next. And the early trailer is my Macho Mon. Maka's reward rides the rail to be quicker than Handsome Harv and Uncle Ike to the back stretch. Maka's reward a length and a quarter in front. Handsome Harv and Uncle Ike are together second and third. Yellow Wolf is 3D and fourth in the yellow and about a length and a half from the front. Cause to action and ripe are fifth and sixth and they're three lengths off the lead. Then it's two and a half to awesome times two. All the wrong reasons is in the blue and white and he's got seven lengths to make up with hard to park just outside of him and the trailer is my macho man as they race towards the half mile pole. Maka's reward continues to lead. Yellow wolf is fourth but could get into second soon as he's on the move three deep. Maka's reward leads by two. Yellow Wolf does take second outside of Uncle Ike and Handsome Harv. Cause to action squeezing through a tight spot at the rail, and he's got it done. Here's Cause to action, and now he takes second, and he's the danger along with Ripe after Maka's reward. Maka's reward to the quarter pole, a length and a half in front of Ripe and Cause to action. Then comes Yellow Wolf. He's dropped out of it at the rail. Handsome Harv. Maka's reward still strong. Maka's reward cuts the corner and leads by two and a half or three. Cause to action is now clearly second. Awesome times two trying to get into third, but it's Maka's reward to the 16th pole, three in front. Cost to action is clearly second, three across the track for third. Maybe all the wrong reasons. It is Maka's reward all the way to the wire to win. Maka's reward won by four and a quarter. Cost to action was second, all the wrong reasons third. Handsome Harv finished fourth. All the way to the wire to win. David Cabrera for the Ron Moquette trained Maka's reward. Maybe Ken Maka, maybe the Oakland A's will win when they have their first game of the season. He's the manager of the A's. 46 and 2, the final running time. Cause to action was second best. All the wrong reasons. Nice rally up the rail for third, and Handsome Harv finished fourth. There was a claim out of this race. Number seven, Ripe, was claimed for $40,000. New trainer, Robertino Diodoro. Maka's reward rewarded his backers at eight to one to win the fourth. Race five is for maiden fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. Alex Conchari rides number one, Tough Irma. They're set to go six furlongs in the first leg of the 50-cent pick five. They're off. 
Kayla Lou broke beautifully, goes right out for the front from Bixby Lou and three halos on the move between horses, then Tough Irma at the rail. Then comes Eternal Bling and Run Bella Run, followed by Good Creation and Sparkle of Mine, then Smoking Hot Kathy, and the early trailer is Skip's Song. Kayla Lou challenged now by Tough Irma on the move and three halos, and there goes three halos up to take over ahead in front of Kayla Lou in second. Bixby Lou is third and about two lengths off the lead with Tough Irma just inside of her. Good Creation is the gray and the yellow. She's fifth with about four lengths to make up. Smoking Hot Kathy, Sparkle O' Mine, and Eternal Bling make up the next flight. They're all six from the front. Then Run Bella Run and Skip's Song, top of the stretch, and Tough Irma and Three Halos are alongside Kayla Lou. Good Creation is splitting horses, and Kayla Lou leads at the top of the stretch, and here's Good Creation to come after her. Good Creation as Kayla Lou comes past mid-stretch and leads by a length. Good Creation has the final 16th to gun her down, and these two race away. Kayla Lou still in front. Good Creation's got a chance to get her on the money, and just might. Kayla Lou, Good Creation, Good Creation. Good creation ran down Kayla Lou. It was 10 back to Skip Song, who finished third. Very close for fourth. Boy, that's the second time in a row that Kayla Lou is an unlucky winner, and it was a mile back to the third horse. This time, Good Creation runs her down. Kayla Lou will not be a maiden for very long. She's running very well. Good Creation was better today, though. Donnie Von Hemel and Richard Aramia team up as the daughter of Creative Cause stops the clock in 112 flat. Skip's song, who was kind of a goofball in the post parade, but really ran great. Look for her next time out. Finished third, and Three Halos was fourth. One 12 flat the final time as good creation starts the pick five at Coors our mountain is creating a more sustainable world it's why we pioneered the recyclable can made our breweries landfill free and built the most powerful solar array at any one brewery in the country but our climb is far from over. So, we keep pushing forward. Coors Light, whatever your mountain, climb on. Bones Chop House offers premium in-house cut steaks, fresh seafood, and a full service bar with a great selection of wines. Open Tuesday through Sunday from 4 to 10 p.m. at 3920 Central Avenue. Hearty eating and good company at Bones Chop House. Race six is set to go six furlongs. It's for Arkansas bred, four-year-olds and up, an allowance, optional claiming price of $16,000. Scratch five, gently tapped. Here's the field of 11 in the sixth. They're off. Good start for Jones Delight and Chant Me Up Baby between horses goes Thunder Up Alley. Weast Hills on the move in the center. Burton Joe and Bay's Commander move up. Uncle Goyle is next, then KJ's Nobility. I am is midfield, then Acumen Comic Bird, and now Chant Me Up Baby is the trailer. Four across the track, Burton Joe, Bay's Commander, Thunder Up Alley, and a four wide Weast Hill. And those four are right across the track. KJ's Nobility comes after them. He's in two fifth now. That's the White blinkers of KJ's nobility. I am just inside of the big favorite. Jones Delight is joined and passed by Comic Bird and Uncle Goyle at the rail. Then two back to Acumen, and the trailer is still Chant Me Up Baby, and Weast Hill is the leader. He's put away the three he was battling with early, but here comes KJ's nobility outside of Weast Hill. Weast Hill into the stretch. Just ahead in front, KJ's nobility alongside, and now right on by. KJ's nobility is suddenly three in front. I am moves through from the inside, but it's KJ's nobility clear. I am running a very nice race in second. KJ's nobility, I am KJ's nobility. KJ's nobility beat I am by a half length. We still was third and chant me up baby came from last to be fourth. KJ's Nobility gets the money in race number six to start off the late pick four. One ten and four, the final running time. That's racehorse time for Arkansas Breds. Owned by M&M Racing and trained by Robertino Diodoro, David Cohen in the saddle. Watch out for IM. He is rapidly getting better. That was a very big race for second. We still, we know him well, and he showed his class today to finish for third, and Chant Me Up Baby came from last to be fourth. The favorite wins the start of the late pick four. KJ's nobility where's the crown 
Race 7 is for three-year-old fillies. An allowance optional claiming price of $75,000. Scratch part of the entry, the one, Caroline the Great. Scratch four, first alternate. Scratch eight, Charmin Dixie. The distance for race seven, one mile. And they're off. Alma Fuerte and Miodoro, the inside two. Break best, Alma Fuerte and Miodoro right to the front. Now moving between horses is Bootsy's had enough to take third as Rusalka will be wide at the clubhouse turn. Next, it's Sydney Freeman and Anukla, followed by Creative Star, and the early trailer is Tahoe Dream. Alma Fuerte trying to slow it down now to the back stretch. Miodoro alongside in second. Alma Fuerte's a neck in front. Miodoro is second, three quarters of a length to Rusalka, who Merges in third and now a length and a half from the front. Nucla is between horses. Sydney Freeman's out the rail just inside of her. Then it's a length further back to Bootsy's Had Enough. Tahoe Dream is traveling nicely for Alex Kanchari. She's behind horses and about four from the front. And the trailer is Create a Star to the half mile pole. The finish line is the 16th pole. And Alma Fuerte and Miodoro have had it one two since they sprung the latch. Alma Fuerte just a neck in front of Miodoro in second. Rusalka is third. Tahoe Dream has been angled to the forepath, and now she's really traveling well. Here's Tahoe Dream all the way up to third. A wide run puts her within a half length of the lead. Creative Star follows her. Nucleus stays at the rail. Many chances rounding the far turn, and Tahoe Dream and Miodoro go on. Alma Fuerte backs out. She's gone. Sydney Freeman in the center and Creative Star, and it is Tahoe Dream who comes off the top of the turn in front. Miodoro battles back from between horses and between horses as well as Nucla, any one of three, Tahoe Dream. Nucla to the outside, Miodoro, Tahoe Dream, and Nucla down to these two, Tahoe Dream and Nucla. It's Tahoe Dream. I think she held off Nucla. It is close. Miodoro third, Sydney Freeman fourth. I continue to be a huge fan of Alex Kanchari, and he must be winning at a massive percentage in these one-mile finish at the 16th pole races. I'm going to get a stat for you. We'll have it on tomorrow's show. Tahoe Dream wins it for Mac Robertson and has to survive a claim of foul. Fernando de la Cruz claimed foul against Kanchari. There was actually bumping, but it happened so late in the stretch, the stewards ruled it didn't affect the order of finish. Miodoro was third, and Sidney Freeman finished fourth. 140 and two, the final running time, as Alex the great wins another one going a flat mile back porch grill serves hot springs finest hand cut black angus steaks fresh seafood pasta and signature appetizers after dinner head up to martinis on the bay for a nightcap or two back porch grill owned and operated for over 15 years by the charles jennings family Charles, also a proud horse owner. Tell him CJ sent you. Back Porch Grill, just minutes from Oaklawn Park on 7 South. Don't worry about me. I'll be just fine. I know you're gone, but not for long. You'll be back someday, I know that for sure. Find this place at hotsprings.org. Race 8 is an allowance optional claiming price of $50,000. Four-year-olds and up going six furlongs in distance. Richard Aramia rides the one scrutinizer scratch six majestic affair. Here's the eighth and feature on the Thursday program. They're off. Smart Spree breaks beautifully, goes for the front from Scrutinizer and Recount with St. Joe Bay between horses. Storm Advisory is next, then Hotshot Kid, Apprehender, and Richie the Bull, and the early trailer is Bourbon Cowboy. Smart Spree fastest up the backstretch. He leads by a length and a quarter. To the outside, Recount, St. Joe Bay just inside of him, and Scrutinizer at the rail. Then it's two lengths further back to Richie the Bull, who's on the move. And here's Richie the Bull within two and a half lengths of the lead. Storm Advisory's at the rail with Fordham 
make up. Apprehender is six lengths off the lead, then Hotshot Kid and Bourbon Cowboy Smart Spree going for four in a row, and he looks sharp to the quarter pull. Smart Spree now leads by two and a half lengths to the outside end, Richie the Bull, who's run up into second. Just inside of him, it's recount. Storm advisories between horses and Bourbon Cowboy Smart Spree is strong past mid stretch, and he opens up a four length lead. Smart Spree just running them right off their feet. Storm Advisory and Richie the Bull are chasing second and third and then Bourbon Cowboy, but Smart Spree is clear as 16th down and he's got four in a row wrapped up. Wow, Smart Spree, yes. Smart Spree won by three. It is desperately close between Storm Advisory and Richie the Bull for second, maybe Scrutinizer for fourth. You know, we talked in the beginning of the show about how tomorrow nominations close for all of the racing festival of the South races. I think that they should nominate this horse to the Count Fleet and run him against Whitmore. I think he's that good right now. We'd be running back three races in 35 days, but man, he is just crushing horses. Smart Spree wins his fourth in a row. The Vitamin Barn won a day. Norman McKnight wins another Ramon Vasquez in the saddle for the facile victory in 10 flat. Richie the Bull wins a very close photo for second over Storm Advice. Advisory, Bourbon Cowboy was fourth. Storm Advisory, the only horse that was eligible to be claimed in the eighth, was in a two-way shake. He goes to Brian Williamson. The ninth and final on the Thursday card is for four-year-olds and up, a claiming event for $50,000. They will go one mile, scratch nine, opportunistic, scratch ten, charming deputy. Here's the ninth and final on the Thursday afternoon. They're off. Aces High made a mess of the start. Brary and Malibu Wood, Hallelujah hit and got even, got even pushed along early by Gary Stevens. Broken Promise is next, then comes Cowboy Rhythm and Secret Passage, and the bad start has Aces High at the back of the pack. Brary is quickest early, and he clears off to the backside. Brary leads Malibu Wood by a length and a half. Got even is outside of Hallelujah hit. Those two together, third and fourth, and now Got even is clearly into third and two from the front. Broken Promise follows him, five off. Off the lead then comes at the rail cowboy rhythm and aces high is the trailer as they head up the back stretch with brary the one to catch brary goes towards the half mile pole the finish line is the 16th pole and brary is three quarters of a length in front of malibu wood in second god even is still third and now two from the front secret passage in the red cap just inside of him then hallelujah hit fifth at the rail and two and a half or three off the lead cowboy rhythm and broken promise and hallelujah hit check sharply at cost him three lengths in two positions. Aces High is still the trailer and Brary is still the leader. However, Malibu Wood is right alongside now and these two right to the quarter pole. Secret Passage in striking position for David Cohen. Cowboy Rhythm presents himself at the rail. Got even not today. One of four can win and Brary is still the one. Brary three quarters of a length from Malibu Wood. Cowboy Rhythm at the rail to the outside Secret Passage and Brary has opened up now and Brary's running a very big race and he's going to win. Brary now four in front. Cowboy Rhythm second. Brary. Two wins. Ron Mo Quet. Brary won by three. Cowboy Rhythm was second. Malibu Wood third. Secret Passage finished fourth. Second win on the day for trainer Ron Mo Quet as Brary, just like Maka's reward, went right to the front going long, cut the corner, and won easy. 138 and 3, the final running time. Second win for Ricardo Santana Jr. as well. He won the opener and the finale. Cowboy Rhythm was second, Malibu Wood third, and Secret Passage finished fourth. Claim out of this race for $50,000. Number one, Cowboy Rhythm, new owner and trainer, Robertino Diodoro. Well, that's another great day of racing in the books for this Thursday. Be sure to join us for tomorrow as we've got another great nine races in store. Yeah, I hope your team won today on opening day of Major League Baseball, and we'll hit it out of the park here tomorrow as Nancy and I will handicap the entire racing card, and that starts at about 12.05. Be sure to join us. So for Vic Stoffer, I'm Nancy Holtis. Thanks for joining us, as always, on Oakland Today.